Hello, and welcome to A Pint of Cthulhu. It is I, Ethan, the Red Toucan, and I am the DM for this adventure. For this adventure, we have Josh playing Addison May, the Tabaxi Fighter. We have Soren J, aka J, playing Furby, the Furbold Druid. We have Captain Hero Man, aka Cap, playing Gertrude, the Hill Dwarf Barbarian. We have Matt playing Donovan Longhop, the Herringong Rogue. And last but not least, we have Cartman playing Vine E. Jackoff, the Air Coco Ranger. All right, sit down, have a pint, and enjoy the episode. A word of warning, this podcast is not for kids, so listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome back to A Pint of Cthulhu. Last time, we went, the, the screen went white for Viney Jackoff as Sister Gorel was fixing his arm that had been bit off by Furby, but was also clutching Furby's very limp and I would say like, de- I, I would say like, de- like just awful at this point. Like I, I mean, because it, it's been rotting flesh. Like I mean, it's been multiple days uh, in there, but it's been just gripping it tightly, would not let it go, and they could not get it out. So she had to fix his arm, still holding it. Um, and so when that happens, let's cut to everybody else actually, <laughs> because everybody else w- was sent up to the Stonehill Inn, um, and. You guys are all resting. You, I mean, the Jerry's gave you a night. Obviously, they said, hey, for what you guys did with us, you know, you guys get those rooms whenever you want. So you guys went up there, had a nice meal, and went to sleep. Um, it is about in the middle of the night. I would say probably 2 a.m., 3 a.m.-ish. Enough. I mean, at this at this point, I would assume in medieval times, they wouldn't have a real indication of specific times when it's nighttime, unless you had a sundial during the day. But it's late enough that you guys are dead asleep. Like sleep paralysis um, is is in effect. Um, you don't feel anything, and then your door bursts open. Are you all in the same room? I forgot to ask. Or do you all have separate rooms? Separate. I don't know separate. if there'd be okay. big enough bed to hold the entire party in one room. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Especially Furby. Furby. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Gertrude takes offense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, in, oh, well, let's, uh, let's gonna start with Gertrude, I'm gonna say at this point. Um, Gertrude, your dir- door, your dear, <laughs> your dear, your door <laughs> bursts <laughs> open, and in the doorway is, is Jerry. Um, he goes, hey, 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 me, me, Miss Dwarf, uh, can you, can you come, uh, can you come real quick? We've got, got a situation with your, your chicken friend. Do you even wake up? No, Gertrude? Gertrude does not wake up. Gertrude is still snoring. <laughs> uh, he he kind of walks in a couple steps and thinks, okay, I'm going to wake her up, and then re- looks at you, remembers his interaction with you in Crack Maw Hideout, and goes, actually, I'm going to let her sleep. And then he turns around, <laughs> and he walks right out the door, and closes the door lightly, <laughs> Uh, realizing also that since he burst it open and you didn't wake up, he really didn't know why he lightly closed it, but still, gotta be safe. Man. Better safe than sorry. Uh, now, Furby, you're also in your own room. You're relaxing and everything. And Jerry, this is actually a different Jerry. I would assume you guys in this world would know the difference between them. Um, you would know that one Jerry is not the same as another Jerry. They don't look absolutely identical. But this is another Jerry. He bursts through. He says, hey, Furbo, we, you gotta get up. You gotta get up. Something wrong with your chicken friend. More wrong than usual? Uh, I mean, 
it's weird. I mean, I, I he's not like dying or anything, but you've got to see it. Sister Garel brought her, brought him into the Stonehill Inn, wondering where you guys were at. Uh, he's passed out in the in the hall. If you want to go down there and check, Furby can help out checking. Seems fair enough. Okay, we're. I got my brothers. My brothers are running from door to door. They're also helping try to get everybody up. Uh, and then as he says that, behind him peers the Jerry that was at Gertrude's uh, room. And he turns around and like, hey, did you, get, did you get the dwarf lady? And he shakes his head. He's like, well, you got to go get her. And he's like, he just kind of gives a look to him. like. And then the one that burst into your room, Furby, turns around and goes, eh, well, we're going to get all your friends except the dwarf. So, yeah, they'll they'll meet you down there. Unless, can you go get your dwarf friend? We know what she's capable of. I'm not going to make her mad waking around. Is there something to punch? Something to what? Is there something to punch or something to drink? Uh, I mean, we, I mean we've always got ale, uh, but I've also got water. If you want to, you know, throw that on, throw that oh. on her, if that's what you're going no, for. No, if that... Oh, God, I've forgotten Furby's voice. Oh, no. <laughs> Furby. A it's a very deep Scottish person. Furby. <laughs> that's just Cap. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's just Gertrude. No. You start off doing like, Furby. Furby. Okay. That's it. Furby can go get poor friend if there's some drink to distract. Uh, oh, yeah. we. I mean, we'll have some. Um, You know, just... We know how much she drinks, though. We just... You guys, guys, guys drank a lot last night. Try not to, you know, drink too much of our supply. We're just now getting some in. Uh, if you drink too much, we won't have anything for tomorrow. So, you know, just uh, maybe a little. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Jerry, can you go set him up? And the one that was behind him that wouldn't work, uh, try, was trying to wake Gertrude up, just nods his head and runs off. So, yeah, they'll get you taken care of with some drinks. Yeah. So, Furby is going to wander over to Gertrude's room and see if he can okay. scoop her up and carry her to booze. Okay, and while that's happening, we cut to about the identical things happening to Addison and Donovan. Um, the door bursts open. It was cut to, to Addison first. The door bursts open. It was, hey, hey, cat, hey, your your chicken friends in the is in the lobby of the, the Stonehill Inn. And the same thing bursts open to Donovan. I would assume you guys are just going to get up and go, but do you guys want to RP that? Oh, that's happening. <laughs> Oh, okay, we'll cut to Donovan then. Donovan, he bursts open and, and tells you that you got to go to the, the lobby of the Stonehill Inn. Donovan is stark bollock naked, drool everywhere after being in a deep sleep. It is completely all oh, over the place. Uh, um, uh, oh, uh, what? I didn't know they could be that small. Uh, it, oh, anyway, um, yeah, your uh, your uh, your your chicken friend is in the. Uh, in the in the lobby, um, could you possibly cl- clothe yourself? I don't. You burst into my room, and you want me to be clothed. What the hell is uh, wrong with the chicken now? Ah, uh, you you kind of really see it to believe it. It's kind of weird. Oh, give me five minutes. I mean, you don't have to. If you want to go back to bed, I just figured you'd want to know. Ah, well, Sorry it's already inconvenience you. I tried to be a good host and let you know when your friends are in right. trouble, but okay. You you have a good one. I'm on it. And yeah, don't even get stressed. It cuts to, to Addison, and obviously the same thing happens. Addison's laying on her side, and she stretches out, stretches out her paws and claws, rolls over, asks... What's wrong with Chicken Man now? Uh, it, it's really just something to do with his arm. I don't really know like how to describe it. Sister Gorel said something about doing her best with what she had to work with. Man, that woman is gorgeous. Have you seen her? Oh, my goodness. Oh, what I do to her. Uh, anyway, uh, side, uh, side of the point, uh, she did what she could. Uh, but it doesn't exactly look the same. Um, and she kind she brought him in not knowing where you guys were at. And we, you know, Sister Grail has kind of a way with us Jerry's to get her to get us to do what she wants. Uh, she's having us get you guys together in the in the lobby, you know, to go go see. Take me to him. I'll go see what's going on. Did you alert the others? Oh, 
Yeah, yes, my brothers are are, are helping. They they went and got we went and got the other ones. Uh, I don't know how it's going. I did kind of hear a lot of shouting uh, coming from the Furby's room. Looks and then I and he peeks out of the hallway. He goes and it looks like one of my brothers is unsuccessful in getting the dwarf. Uh, oh, and your Furby's walking down the hallway. I think they maybe got your your uh, your Furbo friend's help. So, uh, but I can just take you to. Uh, directly to the lobby, if you're ready. Yeah, let's go to the lobby. Let's do this. Find uh, find okay. out what so else Madison that... can screw up. <laughs> so I guess uh, a Donovan. Is <laughs> Addison and... having sort of a crisis of confidence at this, <laughs> this point in time? Now? <laughs> Throughout this entire I don't know if you can screw. I don't really know if you can screw <laughs> this up, but we'll see. <laughs> Knowing Addison, if you uh, don't know Addison by now, she's you know, well. Roll twenty has it out for me. Anyways, go ahead. Wow. Uh, so as Donovan and Addison are going down the hallway, you, uh, let's cut back to Furby trying to wake Gertrude up. Now, obviously, I don't want to spend too much time just getting you guys up from your bed. It looks like this is becoming more of a thing than I thought it would be. Uh, but, uh, I mean, what does Furby do to try and get Gertrude up? No, Furby's doing the time honor tradition of fur bulk things, where he's just going to like grab the edges of the blanket and kind of like delicately carry Gertrude out by the blanket. Okay. Until he can get her near Booz, so hopefully she won't punch him when he wakes up. When she wakes up. Okay. What's the, what's to say that she, <laughs> you're not going to wake her up by doing that? If you can, if you can sleep through a big like door crashing open, you can sleep through a delicate fur bog, carefully tiptoe uh, through the house. Uh, being visibly touches the whole. Oh no! Yeah. Just the black. Uh, that's a whole again, different sense of. T- I'm going to suggest that's a whole um, different sense of the GM <laughs> uh, stealth check just now. I was well. I was about to do a slide of slide hand. hand yeah, that would make more sense on this one. Slide of hand versus perception, maybe. If you want to make it an interactive one uh, for Cap. Well, Ooh. what would I? What, what? What? What do you think, Cap? Endurance, constitution. I mean, constitution. Don't make, come on, you... that's rigging. It's not constitution. Whether or not you notice someone doing something, we know this. Ah, uh, okay. Well, what? A perception. Yeah. There go you go. <laughs> I had to think it through. Shut up, Jay. Jesus. <laughs> Who's a DM here? Me. <laughs> That's All it, I'm right. taking over the channel. Slide of hand and perception roll. Oh. Oh, goodness. Yeah, uh, so she tries to lightly, um, from, from Furby's perspective, he he lightly scoops up Gertrude. Um, now, for anybody that'd be viewing this interaction that is not Furby, uh, if you guys can't tell, uh, Cap, Cap, right, uh, seven for me, Cap for Cap. Yes, yes. Uh, so technically, for, so Furby failed and Cap succeeded. So uh, anybody viewing this interaction would notice that it is not anything but lightly. So he just, uh, Furby just scoops uh, Gertrude straight up in his arms. And a little bit too hard to the point where Gertrude actually goes up in the air for like an inch and then comes back and, and just slams into Furby's arms. Uh, and obviously, Gertrude senses all this. Now, does what does Gertrude do? Well, Gertrude reflexively just grabs Furbold by the arm and attempts to throw Furbold across the room. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, it's okay. Gertrude, so she can probably do it. <laughs> Um, I think throw is a roll. Um, now does Furby go want to contest this roll like a dex? Do it? You want to do a dodge roll? I'm trying to look. I think throw is not a roll. Throw is no. I, I, I need to pull up somebody's character sheet. It'll so be trim for a reflex, depending on what you think. And uh, Furby's not braced to stop himself being thrown, so I'm gonna say probably not contested. Just whatever difficult you think it would be to throw a fur bulk. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up a character sheet here. Okay. Um. So yeah, you're not even do like a, you don't even want to try like an athletics roll or anything. Not visibly, Furby is not prepared to be eaten. Okay. All right. Well, then just do a strength roll. Throw is not a roll because I'm still got Call of Cthulhu sometimes in my head. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate what's a skill in that game and then what's a skill in this game. Fourteen. So. Is that enough to successfully? Uh, maybe. Maybe just toss or. I would say you try to kind of throw her across, uh, throw him across the room, uh, but you just kind of do like a judo throw over your shoulder. Yeah, judo throw over the shoulder. That'll do the job. 
Yeah, yeah. You were intending to throw across the room and it caused some serious like, impact. Yeah, I think everything. given that she was just dropped, we can say that she maybe uh, was off balance. Yes, a little disoriented, but luckily it's just enough that Furby doesn't have to take any damage, but to Furby, you are definitely disoriented and we're not expecting to be judo thrown over the shoulder of Gertrude. Um, especially considering you thought, you seriously thought you were being very stealthy in picking her up, and it did not work out that way. Your friend has become very perceptive. Good. But, uh, not time for a nap. Just woke up. Time to get booze. Mm. Oh, and maybe save chicken. Not sure. Hmm. Richard grunts in agreement. Okay, well you guys go down to the lobby. Um, and now that you guys are all there, as Furby and, and Gertrude come down the stairs, you do see uh, Donovan. Donovan, you are closed, correct? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course. Well, you say of course, because there is a absolute you chance that you are ago. not going to be closed. That's why I ask. Oh no, Donovan always stays uh, very clothed in public. Um, so you actually see... Uh, now, as you guys come in, you're at the top of the stairs, and at the bottom is is Donovan, Addison, and the three Jerry's, and also odd enough, uh, the blacksmith Terry, and another goblin you guys haven't met before, but this one is quite a bit bigger than the other ones, and wearing a suit, and has a cigar sticking out of his mouth, but he's uh he looks like it's kind of like a suit, like a pajama style, like very fancy. It's like it's silk pajamas and everything, but like a suit, like he's got a tie on it. It's very strange, but he looks very official, like rich and wealthy. Um, but he's got his cigar in his mouth and he's looking over down on a table, and next to him is Sister Garel. Um, as said to all of you guys, just like Donovan, I don't know if everyone besides Donovan and, and the chicken uh, have seen, uh. Sister Garel, but to all of you, she is grotesque. Like, she might as well, she fits in very well with all these goblins. She's about a mm, foot taller than all of them, and just green, warty, looks like a witch from Wizard of Oz. Like, it's very ugh, hideous, is an understatement. Um, and she's standing over Viney, and Viney is sprawled across a table. Um, Everything looks fine. He's passed out. It looks like he's asleep. Wings spread out. He just, he looks like he just had a hard night's drink. Um, but his right arm is different than the rest of his, the arms. Um, what you can tell, you notice immediately, there is no feathers on it. From the elbow down, it's a normal hand. It looks like a normal fur bulg hand. Um, it's this color of Furby, and it's hairless, but it's just a nor normal verbal can. Like, you could even, Furby could walk up to him, put his right arm right next to Vines, and it's very similar. The only difference is completely hairless. No feathers, no hair, no nothing from the elbow down. Does this mean that he's going to have lost the ability for flight? I think, well, he has I think he has wings. Yeah, he has, they're separate. Right, okay. They're separate. Air Coker, it does like angel wings. Air Coker have like angel like wings. I believe some, you could go either way. Some of them have them like harpies, like that, where their arms are wings. Um, but his, from what we determined, his are on his back. And he's got arms, the normal feathered arms with hands and fingers and everything, and clawed feet. So. Uh, but no, this he's got just a a fur bulg arm that is hairless and surprisingly soft skinned. Was was I always a wear fur bulg? Is Birdie going to be wear fur bulg? This is different. I um, can we wake him up? Um, how do you wake him up? Do you touch the arm? Do you touch? Gertrude slaps the chicken. <laughs> you slide his face? Yes. Oh. Matt, can you edit in the uh, squeaky chicken sound effect? Oh, really? I like my life, but I prefer my feet to squawk. I'm not going to do a lot of damage. I'm not going to do a lot of if he does. Okay, if he does, but I mean, he, you don't get slapped by Gertrude, nothing happens. Do you want to roll uh, D6 um, or something? No, one second. I need to ask. I mean, 
do, so because I passed out, do I get a short rest or any health back, or am I just going to be on fourteen health? Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be fair on that. <laughs> uh, I did say at the beginning that everybody besides you had a short rest, but I didn't okay. really kind of see how this go. But no, you're passed out. You definitely got a short rest. Oh, I mean, a just, long rest. Everybody, everybody got a so long. Is that rest. full health then? So, oh. Yeah, you're at full health, full spell spell, uh, spell slots for all of you. You're all good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be an absolute dick and. <laughs> The well, you I'm, don't I'm get just, like, the rest of everybody else. <laughs> I'm just joking. So. I mean, if I start getting slapped around by Gertrude, don't you? we all know what happens there. Yeah, well... <laughs> it's going to be like that Duffy Duck scene when he gets a... slapped around his face. Oh, did Gertrude roll a d uh, Actually, can you roll your... um? Roll... Just go ahead and roll your... um. Unarmed strike? Yes, unarmed strike. I'm trying to see if it hits his AC. If... Oh. I mean, you'll hit him, but I'm not... It's whether or not you, you do like a 1d4... Bludgeoning damage to to him or something. All right. So, one arm straight. Right. So roll one d twenty plus five. I think. Jesus, I forgot your strength is busted at the ass. Wait, plus yeah. five. Oh shit. That's All a right. fourteen to hit. It's a fourteen. Yeah, my my AC is thirteen. So. Yeah, yes. so that's a hit. Yep. <laughs> and then damage would be. Well, it does say it's five plus one. Six damage. So same as you got on the dice. Funnily enough. I think. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's plus one to your strength modifier. So. <laughs> yep. And what is uh your uh, what is your AC, Finey? AC is thirteen. Thirteen. Oh yeah. So it's okay. So roll a D four for me, Gertrude. Oh, roll a D four. Hold on. Roll one D four. Is that my damage? Oh, yeah. yeah. You take oh. two damage. Sorry. Yeah, I've, 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 you just I've, had I've, your short I've, rest, I've, but... I've, it's, not, it's not 12, so... <laughs> Can't complain. Okay. Alright, so... You find, you wake up, do a hard start. Yeah, but and, and obviously I, I squawk about it. Because um, I'll, I'll pee a little bit. So obviously, uh, after a good hits me, I, I fear that. I squawk. What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to sleep here. God damn dwarf and hitting me about. Mm. God. Here's here's the interesting thing. My head. Happened. Yeah, as you your head as you do that, you use your right arm to grab your head because you know that's where you got slapped. You got slapped real hard and you say use your right arm to touch your head. Uh and this is probably your first time you're seeing this new arm. Um, now, here's the interesting thing about th what happens next, is that as you do this and you touch your face with it, um, you can move it. You can move the fingers, um, but it's very dull. It's as if, like, you slept on it. Like, you like you poke at it, you do everything, uh, you start poking at it with your hand, and you don't really feel it. It feels as if you're wearing, like, a very thick thick glove and like puffy coat or something over that second like you hardly feel anything in it it's very dull but as you do this furby you feel this on your right arm like oh my arm thank god the, <laughs> well i mean i was gonna have you feel it in the abdomen but i had some concerns please i mean you, you don't have a penis you have a lightning rod now True. Yeah. I wonder if I can shit lightning out of Cartman's hand. I mean, if he strokes it enough. You feel it. You can't move it, you can't control it, but wherever he's poking, you're feeling that poke on your right arm. <laughs> Kirby's gonna flex his hand real hard and see if Cartman's hand flexes? It doesn't fl You flex it really hard to the point where it hurts, and and Vine feels the pain. It doesn't flex, but he feels as if his arm is being flexed. It's as if you... Vine controls the arm, Furby controls his his arm, but you both share feeling with that arm. <laughs> well, you're going to know whenever he chokes his chicken. Yes, you'll know, yeah. 
If I need to size feet, if it, it feels like it's a new person. Oh no. <laughs> and sadly, Per for Furbog has to feel Vine's cock all the time as he's jacking on. If, so if, he's mine e jack off. If if Viney chokes chicken, Furby will choke bigger chicken. <laughs> and he'll look directly at Viney. I mean I'll you, just say, I'm not. just sitting there you very, have two very hands. confused. The implications of this of just collecting Gertrude's mind and she starts laughing and then she walks over <laughs> and punches the Furbog in the arm. Oh, it doesn't go two ways. <laughs> you no. don't know. Oh, no, <laughs> it does. Because remember, you flex. Oh, no. remember, you flex. Oh, so you yeah. The pain of the flex. Oh, yeah, you feel it. You two punch the arm. The price of one. Roll, roll attack against rolling on armor strike, which is, is your strength modifier versus uh, is plus one. So that's all it is. Just roll your strength, roll a strength, plus one. Alright, so strength plus one? Yep. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, yep. Yeah, roll. <laughs> Which, what's the damage? Wait, is that, is that on strike? Is that your. Is the strength it's your damage. Your damage or your. Okay, so what is the roll to hit? It's exactly what. it's. The strength save is actually accurate for it. Or maybe not save, just a strength roll would be accurate for it. I think it's the same anyway. Uh, why well, we've been doing this for what is it like the twelve, thirteen episode? Yeah. I think. So yeah. just give me a dice to roll for damage. Yeah. Uh, Which, yeah. Roll a d four again. Sure. Two. Two. Oh yeah, you both. Yeah. Both Furby and Vine get another. Vine gets another two damage, and Furby also. <laughs> Seeing gets two them damage. both take damage is really amused Gertrude. She's now proper gut laughing in the back here. And she winds up another punch, and this time at um, at the chicken. <laughs> oh my Get god! Gertrude. Nobody can stop the very damaging dwarf <laughs> yeah, running around that's, that's destroying it. everything. Gertrude, probably best not. We don't kill our own team. Have a drink instead. Probably a better option. There okay. might be some evil things to kill later for you. Gertrude reaches out the arm that she was about to use to punch chicken in the arm, and she takes the drink instead and starts having a wee. We sup. So, as this is all going down, you, you, the cherries are doing everything they can not to burst out laughing. Um, and but they're they're trying to keep their cool because they keep eyeing Sister Gorel and they're like blushing a little bit and looking away. Um, now it cuts back to that very large goblin. That I told you before, that's very fancy looking and rich. He's got that cigar in his hand, or whatever they have. I would, no, actually, you know what I'll say? Is this is made this would be more fitting for him to have a pipe with some tobacco leaves in the pipe? And he's, he's puffing that pipe and he pulls it out. I'm getting Sigma Boy well, like, vibes here. Well, uh, don't usually, uh, I don't think I've ever seen something like this. This is, uh, this is a new one for me. Hey, he's a wise guy. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he put and he, he kind of he looks to the to Sister Gorel and Sister Gorel turns. He was like, yeah, 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 yes, Donnie. He goes, can you uh, can you all get me a, a a drink for a friend here? And she goes, I I, I don't work. And he just kind of gives her a look as she says, I don't work. About to say, I don't work here. And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, Donnie. And she, and, and she runs off into the back, and then Jerry's are just like, just kind of looking around, like, "Well, what, what, what do we chop liver?" Uh, and the Donnie eyes them. The Jerry's go, I, "Oh, we'll uh, we'll go get drinks for the rest of them," and they also all run out. Uh, and Terry, the blacksmith, I already told you was there too. Donnie looks at him and he goes, "Hey, uh, hey, Terry, what are you uh, what are you even doing here?" <sighs> And Terry goes, I, I just I just wanted to see what's any just like with Sister Gorel, he gives Terry a look. And Terry goes, I, I'll go back to my back to my smithy. And he runs out the door. And now you guys are just kind of in there alone with from what you can tell, a very large goblin, very fancy looking goblin named Donnie. And who the hell do you think you are? I'm a... Uh... I, I like the attitude. You got, got a, got some fight in you. I like it. You might be useful to me. 
I'm Donnie. I'm the Don of this village. Uh, took over for, uh, took over the Vandalin Miners Exchange. Um, one in, uh, I didn't exactly win it like everybody else in here, everybody that's around here. I, uh, let's just say my contest wasn't with dice, shall we say. Oh, you killed the bitch that owned it before. Well, oh, fair enough. Ah, uh, I don't like to use the strong language, and we don't, I don't take too kindly to just blatantly saying such things around here. Uh, but I'm also what's left of also a town master as well. Uh, I, I kind of run both. Uh, um, but I'm the, they call me Donnie the Don. Uh, but I, I kind of run things around here now. So, uh, I, I didn't really like it too much when my workers, like Terry there, gets a little overzealous and decides to wake up in the middle of the night just to see what's going on. Uh, Nothing against you guys. It's them. I'm 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 frustrated with. You guys are guests. From what I'm telling you, saved uh my associates, Jerry's from the Kragma tribe. Mm-hmm. In a manner of speaking, yes. Well then. Why do I get the feeling you're hooked into organized crime? And where is my invitation? I'm gonna... As a... Because you're my guest. As a fellow Don. <laughs> I, if, because you're my guest. I'm gonna pretend you didn't say anything just now. And I'm gonna walk out the door and go back to my own abode and get some sleep. If, uh, but... And he pulls out... He goes into his little, his, his it's like a fancy suit style pajama. So he, he's kind of wearing, oh gosh, how do I even put it? I don't know what to call it. Um, ooh, what's it? Mm, there's a famous TikToker that he's a official greeter. I don't know if you guys have seen him. He's really funny and cool. Like he'll be, he does like really posh and uptight like introductions to people into like supermarkets and stuff he's wearing this very sophisticated like it looks like a silk overcoat in a weird way or like a, a blazer but i don't know i'll have to send you guys a picture but either way he's he reaches into it and he pulls out a card and on it just says donnie <laughs> that's all it says does it say anything else it's like look like it's handwritten too uh and he goes here's my card don't hesitate to stop on by if you need anything, okay? Or if uh, any of my associates in this town uh, give you trouble. And he takes another puff of his pipe and walks out the door. Hmm. Donovan has some bad feelings about this, dude. Not gonna lie, he seems a little bit even sketchier for me. I'm gonna burn his house down while he sleeps. Well, that's putting it one way, but... Gertrude's uh, just eyeing up Farbo's arm again. Gertrude. Gertrude. Farbo's Gertrude. Farbo slightly, like, shuffling, edging away. She's got a small grin in her face. Look, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I think we may have made a mistake um, letting... Letting, our ta letting this town be taken over, as it were. Especially now that there's another... Don involved. Donovan's not too happy about having someone share the first part of his name. Furby thinks it's working out well. One Don for organized crime, one Don for disorganized crime. I agree with, I agree with Furball. I mean, this is the third time we've had people take over this town. I mean, it, it's going to happen eventually anyway, so why not this guy? We need to see if he's a decent enough person, I think. But then again, I think I think this town is probably lost already, so let's just carry on as normal, shall we? Let's see what this Don wants. Uh, remember, we still have Dragon Sneak Past and Spider Castle to do. 
So uh, after dawn, maybe we do those. I also put the the greeter that I was talking about. He actually is on TikTok and he does that and he stands outside and does very... Yeah, he's wearing a silk bathrobe. Yeah, it's a silk bathrobe. I just kind of couldn't find the word. You, luckily, you got it. But it looks like very kind of, you know, fancy. It's a purple silk bathrobe with black axe. Yeah, he's, oh, got, a, he's got an ass on. He's got a collared shirt underneath it. Like, it's fancier than it needs to be, clearly. <laughs> just simple. So, yeah, that's kind of what he looks like. Um, and, yeah, so you guys are... Uh, just quickly, what would be the best one for us to do next? What, in terms of level-wise, should we be doing? Because I've completely forgotten what order we should be doing these. Uh, there is no real order, actually. You can do any of them at any time. They are not designed like with a specific level in mind. So. Yeah, the quests we have open are sneaking past a dragon to rescue some dude who got lost, which is one of the regular side quests we were going through before the break. Then we've got this Don Mafioso Goblin guy. Yeah. And then the Cragmore Castle, which should probably be last, or at least later than the others. Isn't Isildur still camped outside the town? Whatever his name is. Uh, uh, Sildar Hellwinter? Yeah. Sure still it's Sildar, he's, still wait, he's still waiting on us getting our asses together and going and doing stuff. I'm pretty sure Sildar is an elf from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know it had something <laughs> similar, similar. Actually, Isildur is not an elf. Why dare? How dare you do your Lord of the Rings Lord Oh wrong? my god, did I get it wrong? He's the first Numenorean. Oh, yeah, he's, he's the, the descendant yeah, he's of Aragorn. The first Numenorean, he's not from Lord of the Rings, he's from the Sumerian. <laughs> First, well, he's the descendant of the Numenorean. He's the first line of Numenorean king. No, he's not. No, he's part of the first line, actually, because yeah, the line was broken and Aragorn comes back. But yeah, Isildur was where the line broke. And yeah, Isildur, but... but Aragorn's his descendant. So yes. Yeah. In any so case, track. we have to do the dragon sneak past. And eventually the castle, but the dawn thing should come before the castle. <laughs> so I agree with Furbog. <laughs> I say we check out this dawn thing since we're in town before we go out. Yes. I mean, it's late in the night, though, too. Um, do you guys want to go back to sleep? Or uh, are you guys just up and about? I would like to stealth like around. Oh, so you're okay. All right. Donovan well, will stealth in the opposite direction to Addison to get a bonus on distraction. <laughs> How many of us have dark vision? Uh, I do. Can any of us? Yeah. Well, Gertrude, sorry. <laughs> Gertrude and Addison, bunny rabbits don't, I don't think. No. And I know I don't. We've never had that problem in the past, though. I have dark vision. <laughs> yep, so it's Addison and, and, and Gertrude. <sighs> um, I mean, so Addison's going to stealth around. Gertrude, God, you mean you got rudely waking up. Are you going to just stay up now? Um. But I say, as you guys are debating this... Yeah, um, Gertrude's just waiting for our job. She's wondering what the hell we're doing here. Yeah. Well, I mean, to distract you, Gertrude, at the same time, is Garel sets a tankard in front of you. Uh, and it's kind of small. I mean, it's actually not real bag. It looks like it's like a normal drink size, but definitely not something that you get served by Jerry's. And at this exact same time, the Jerry's run in with the normal size tankards, the huge ones, big old pints, and sits in front of everybody else and Garel looks around and goes, oh my god I'm, I'm so I'm so sorry and grabs the drink and Jerry, and as soon as she picks up the drink another Jerry comes in behind her and sets the proper size in front of you he goes, hey, you don't work here, so well, let us do the do the job, I, I mean Donnie's gone as you can tell, how about you go how about you go back to your, your home uh, do you need me to walk you? and as he says that, he's blushing a little bit uh, she, she goes, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Jerry and Garel, before you disappear, what's with this new Don? What's the deal? Uh, well... Do you like him? Uh, I don't like this do line of questioning. Do you like um, him? You, see, I got a job to do. I've got a job to do, and your line of questioning is going to get me in 17 trouble. 17 intimidation, I'm going for this. No, you're not, because I didn't tell you to roll. Oh, yeah. please. No, you can't just check every time. No, you don't. No. And actually, 
I would have had you do it had you not rolled it beforehand. So, bitch, learn just your manners. <laughs> yeah, no. So he he before you could even press him, he wanders off into the back room. Are any of the other Jerry's still learned? I mean, they're they're ones wiping a table now because I mean, it looks like they're kind of like you guys. Um, even though it's the middle of the night and they looked groggy before, after the interaction with Don, they are. They might as well have drank an ex- like a double shot of espresso. They are ready to go. They are one's already cleaning everything. One's sweeping. Um, it looks like another one's running upstairs. I'm gonna, there's five Jerry's. Okay. If you guys really want to count them, uh, there is five different Jerry's, which is odd because when you guys came, it's really odd for you. Is that when you first started here, there was three. Yeah, they're multiplying. You're really kind of wondering what the other two came from, um, but at the same time, it's like the entire town is now filled with different goblins so i mean when that part itself is very odd but like two more jerry's is kind of another one on the the list of things that's just weird about the town now but yeah there's five of them two of them are running upstairs it actually one is running upstairs when you guys notice this another one's running down the stairs with sheets from y'all's rooms looks like one is they're about to do laundry and stuff like that and yeah, so they are just going to town cleaning Right, so Furby's going to sit in a chair and try and casually lean back and say, We've done lots of work here. Took down Red Gang when being bad leader. Took down Clark before for being bad leader. Real good there isn't any more terrible, despotic, diabolical... Dictator all leaders who kill people for not following them around, else we'd have to fight them too. And just kind of shrug his shoulders while being as loud as possible. So, <laughs> as you say this, um, see, my sister was Gre- Garel was, was on her way out, um, but she stops at the door and she eyes you, Furby, when you say that, and gives a like a, a eye motion. Like, she like to motion out the door. <laughs> okay. To kind of, like, follow her. And she walks out the door. Okay. Um, do you all go? I mean, she just motioned to Furby, but she was... I guess she... I mean, from what she looked, she kind of met all your eyes, I would say. Mm. Um, and to motion to go out, so she wants you all to follow. Okay. So... Up I get, off I go. Yeah. Okay. Heck, actually... You guys go and you... Why not? Furby's gonna... Uh, does it seem like anyone's trying to look, like paying too much attention to us as we're going? Uh, no, I mean, about as much attention as a waiter would do. Um, but what you were saying, it's a, I mean, a great comparison to this it would be as if you're talking and there's like waiters and waitresses around you in a restaurant, but you're talking to the person across the table. It's, I mean, like they're generally just ignoring okay. you. Like they're, they have no real indication that you're talking to them directly. So no reaction from the so, hole will kill anyone who's being a shit leader thing. Oh no. I mean, this is a, this is an in. In a, in a, a forgotten realms, this is not the first time, like killing. I mean, these guys are also from a bandit tribe. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, killing and stuff like that is not exactly something unheard of or a big deal to them. Okay, so, cool. Know, it, it, it's just common talk to them. For real, get up and so, follow the lady. Okay. All right. And as you guys kind of walk out the door, one of the Jerry's goes like, "Hey, yeah, come and get. We're as you can tell, we're up and about." Um, I mean, uh, what looks like the other Jerry's fixing your sheets as we speak. Uh, it should be ready if you guys want to go back to sleep here in about 10 minutes or so. We're pretty fast on cleaning your sheets. So, yeah, it'll be ready. Think, uh, we'll be here when you get back. And they get right back to sleeping and cleaning. So, you guys go out and, and she's, as you guys walk out, it, it, surprisingly, she walked very fast. Because um, you look out and there's nothing. Like, it's completely empty. And also what's odd is before this town, um, it looks just like when it was run by the Red Brands. And I say that is because after they got rid of the Red Brands, uh, before you got rid of the Red Brands, at night it was very dark. Like there wasn't a light in the house anywhere. There was nothing. It could be almost pitch black. Just the moon was the only light that you would get. Um, after the Red Brands, there was lights and windows thing. It was kind of like it felt like a normal village at that point. It's back to that point. Um, and you that's what you notice immediately. Um, I mean, because when you guys came back in, 
you guys noticed that the goblins were here and stuff, but it was during the day. And this is the first time you guys have seen it at night with all these goblins. And also kind of shocked is just how fast of a transition it was. Because it's only been a few days um, for you guys have been gone. But um, it's completely empty and you have just enough light from the moon to look over. And you guys, obviously it's Sister Grail that you're following. Um, so you guys look over to the Shrine of Luck that she normally is at. And her house behind it. And at the doorway of her house, you can see she's at the door with the lantern about halfway in the door halfway out and looks at you all and motions for you to come okay if everybody's gonna start looking towards her she yeah. seems a trustworthy lady she'll find you out Addison wanted the fall of the dawn oh oh you're gonna follow yes. the dawn oh, so, oh, oh okay okay um he that's the interesting thing. Um, you guys were all in the tavern. Um, Dad, uh, I didn't let you talk too much after he left. I'm going to give you a chance. Uh, did you wait with all this? Did you leave? Is this? Did you wait until now to go, or did you leave immediately as he left? Immediately as he left. Okay. Yeah, this will be like the only time. Don't. But I, I didn't give. I sadly didn't give Josh a chance to talk uh, to where he could tell me this if he wanted to. So I'm gonna let him retcon just a little. Um. So yeah, you go ahead and roll a stealth roll for me. I clicked on it. <laughs> roll a seven. Okay. So. Okay. So as soon as you walk out, um, he's just walking down the road. He takes a right. Which is odd, because the Town Master's Hall and Van Dalen's Exchange is, you know, to the left from where you leave the Stonehill Inn, and then goes around the corner right there. You guys know where it's at. But he takes a right, and he goes down all the way to the Sleeping Giant. Then he takes a, a right and goes into the forest. You're following him. You're about 20 paces away. I mean, you, this isn't your first time sneaking. You know the distance to keep back from somebody. Um... And he goes off into a field. There's a field right there by the elderly farm. He goes out in the middle of it. He takes a left. Um, he's just leading you around. <laughs> he no, he, You don't know this, but he clearly knows you're following him. And he's just walking around. Uh, you have no clue. He, he has no real indication. He just gives no indication that he knows you're there. So you don't know this. Um, but for everybody kind of reading this, it's just, you're just being run around. Yeah, you don't have to move his, uh, move Addison's token, because they don't stay at the elderly farm. I'm not going to spend, you know, uh, 30 minutes explaining where they go here, they go here, they go here, they go here, they go here. Uh, but he never stops walking. <laughs> uh, he just keeps walking. Um, but it's, it's along the outskirts. And so he kind of even goes along the, you can see on the map, there's a broken down, um, a wall from where there used to be like rock wall. He's just tracking that now, like he's just walking along the Addison's, wall as if Addison's he's running a, picking up a on, foot track. Picking up on what he's doing, and decides to go back to the group and let them know that he's just wandering around. He knows he's being followed. This is no point. If you left, go ahead. Hang on. Give, if give you me left a perception. before we left, and the girl stuff happened. You left right away, right? Yes. Here. You don't. Yeah, he left. You don't know where we are. He would probably go right. He would go right back to the stone. Yeah, he don't know. And you want oh, perception? Def, but uh, go and give me perception roll. Oh, yeah, roll perception roll that you even know he's twenty two. Oh, 22. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you you figured out. You by the second you walk, I would say you figured out by the second you walk to the elderly farm, and he just like meets the wall that's there, and just takes a left and just starts walking along the wall. You're like, oh, okay. Uh, and you know, so you just turn around and go back. Cause I mean, you're a, you're a tabaxi, you're a seaworthy person. This probably, uh, just like I said before, it ain't the first time you did stealth. It probably ain't the first time you've had someone try to track you and you do these numbers where you just walk in circles till they leave. So yeah, it, you knew you leave. Um, but you go back to the Stonehill Inn and nobody's there. Uh, but you see the Jerry is going crazy. Cleaning everything. So, what do you, what do you do, Addison? Jerry's. Do you just go back Jerry's. to sleep, or do you ask them, or what? Jerry's. Where did the group go? And can I get two bottles of rum to go and a glass right now? Uh, okay. Um, see, 
we, we kind of have a thing uh, with with we, we, we really pleaded with the Don with, with the Don about the ale thing for you guys how great it is and he's totally okay with us giving you guys free ale and stuff um, the rum though that's like we make the ale actually we kind of pride ourselves on it the rum we have to I'll order, take the ale uh, okay yeah yeah we got you some so oh you want it to go okay so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll give you a small keg uh, we have some small barrels out there that you, and give you a couple couple pints. Uh, sadly, we don't have a lot of like pint glasses, so if you could just bring the glasses back to us. But, yeah, you guys are good. You're, so the, out from the, you're talking to the one that's sweeping. He motions to one that's wiping the counter down, and the, the one wiping behind the counter nods his head, reaches behind the counter, pulls out a small keg. I would say about the size, about a foot tall, like seven inches in diameter. It's a big keg. But by no means like a keg of beer that you would see nowadays, like huge. Um, but it's enough that, you know, you probably get two, three pints, full pints out of it. And they reach behind the counter, grab two pint tankards. Uh, oh, if you're, if you're wondering where they're at, um, I hate to say we don't really know. We've become so busy working. We watched them walk out. Um, but they didn't exactly tell us where they were going. So, uh, but they left about... A minute ago, you may still see okay. them. Okay, what about this Don character? What do you know about him? Oh, he's our boss. Hmm. When did that start? Ah, about a day or two ago. Oh. So he just uh, kind of come in and took over? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of how we goblins roll. You know? Um, we, you know, he's big and everything, and so we kind of he, and he seemed really smart, so we just let him be our town master. So basically, you just let him run things. Okay. Yeah, and he so far, he's running pretty good. I mean, it's just kind of how we goblins are. I mean, you remember from Kragma Tribe? You know, we let we let those guys, those those uh, those bugbears yeah. uh, control us, and they don't like us. That's why we're so thankful for you guys for letting us live and killing off them and not them not coming back for us and stuff. I don't know. It feels like a breath of fresh air, really. And as soon as he says that, though, like he gets to that point, like you hear, you see a glass fly from behind the counter and hit him aside the head. And he start, he goes, ah, what? And he looks behind the counter, and but the the Jerry is behind the counter, looks him dead in the face and goes, shut your mouth. Mm. And and then Jerry goes. You you could have just asked. He's like, sorry. I mean, Addison takes a look, of her. and he looks. He, he looks at the guy behind the counter. He looks at you and goes, "Look, I'm not gonna talk too much." And he looks at the guy behind the counter, eyes him. He says, "I'm not gonna say too much, but I do want to explain to these guys that if they're gonna be here in and out. Uh, it's kind of our habit too, Goblin. We don't talk about our master. We want to explain that to you. You know, it's just." Understandable. Uh, it's just kind of how we understandable. Roll. Yeah, but Addison's thinking to herself yeah. that she knows the trolls or the goblins are keeping stuff from her, and I go okay. out. Well, I would say, would you do a perception roll on yeah. that? <laughs> See what I get on this. Yeah. Here we go. Sixteen. Oh, 16. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it, but at the same time, I I'm going to say this with a sixteen, though you can perceive that. I mean, it's what seems like they're keeping secret is important. And you can definitely tell that. That whatever it is they're keeping from you is important to them. So, yeah. Addison smiles. But go ahead, what you're saying. smiles and nods and raises the glass and says, well, here's to new ownership. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to go find the group. Oh, if you... You said you wanted that to go. Yeah, one one here, glass here, for here, 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 one here, to go. That... Yeah, yeah, about to say yeah. And so, because I assume then you probably raised it to your lips from the keg. So they take the keg back from you, they fill it back up, and they give it back to you. And it's like, yeah, you could just ask me. I'd have given you one for here, and then you know you said you wanted a keg and two glasses to go. So yeah, here you go. You keep that to go, and here's your free glass for here. And they wave you on your way. Now I'm not gonna repeat everything multiple times. Um for everybody, just for audio's sake. Um, the explanation Addison just got 
is exactly what Garel was giving you. Like at this exact same time. Uh, Addison, you don't really know. You walk out and there's just nothing going on. But this exact same time Addison's getting this explanation, Sister Garel is telling you guys, it's just the Don, um, I, talking about him out in the open is very, like, it's, it's a goblin thing. They don't, they admire strength above all. And he just showed up about a day ago. And being a very big and very smart and intelligent goblin without actually being, like, say, a hop goblin, but an actual goblin, they flocked to him. And they're obviously, I mean, come on. Like, look how fast they won this town over. They're creatures of opportunity. And he took the opportunity and he took over. And they were more than welcome. But it was the second he took over... Things changed in the goblins. Like, they started... Like, it, it, it's... They act that way you saw, where they're... They act like they're scared, but when I catch them not... Like, when they think no one's looking, they smile a lot. Like, they're happy the way they are. So, um... They really like you, so I think that's why... They, you know, they just won't outright tell you or get mad at you. Like, that we had a fellow come in, like, late, like, I think right after you guys arrived. Um, you see that he's not here? He started asking the same questions you guys did. And they ran him out of town. I mean, they didn't kill him or anything, but they ran him out of town. Because they just didn't like him. They love you guys, but... You're, you keep asking those questions and stuff. You're going to make them uncomfortable. Maybe just go in tradition then? Show respect to leader I mean, by fearing them, but leader are still good? I mean, that's kind of what I can gather. Um, where does, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's... Where does he live? I, I'm... You know? I don't know. I see him in the Town Master's Hall. I see him at the... Ben Delvin Miners Exchange, but uh, he's invited me over for some drinks a couple of times. Oh, he's very sweet. Uh, very A little bruff and weird in the way he talks. He definitely talks differently than the rest of the goblins. Um, and obviously I was here when there was people here, and they all kind of shunned me away. And it's a little, I guess it's a little bit of a breath of fresh air that people are just, you know, welcoming in. And I mean, I've, I've never felt more, you know, appreciated. Um, but they've kind of, he's been very nice. Um, but I, every, both locations, both the Fandelvers Exchange and the Townmasters Hall do not have beds in them. They've never were equipped to be lived in. So I hate to tell you, I don't know what house he's living in. I think I need to have a word with him. Don V. Don. Um, oh, I would not say that to him. Why is that? A Don is kind of a thing, like it's a title because to them. Because they make value of cringe, that's name is, uh, <sighs> His name is, I mean, his name is Donnie, yes. Um, but he's Donnie the Don. It's a title. And so he's Donovan, not the Don Harry the Don. Don, he's Donnie the Don. So it's a title. And your name's Donovan. Um, if you were to start referring to yourself as a Don... Um, it might kind of insult him or see as if you're coming on to his No, I can't turf. say... I said they're very territorial things. They're very territorial. I can't say I'm about to go by the name of Don. My name is Donovan. When I, when I meant Don v. Don, I meant as in, you know, I thought his name was Don, so, you know. Yeah, but it's Donny the Don, so it's... Oh, well, Donny v. Donovan, yeah. then. There you go. Right, uh... <laughs> When you say talk, funny man, do you mean nice talk or knife talk? No, nice talk for starters. It tends... Are you being truthful? I am, actually. Donovan is a rogue. He is a thief. I mean, these are also... Your friends have seen you just walk up and stab things in the side of the head <laughs> without warning. So... At 100%. Like, do you guys believe truthful. him when he says he's going to quietly and calmly talk to this? Especially Gertrude has seen Donovan like attack the previous owner of the Fandel of his exchange just because of how she talked to him. So what do you uh, 
you guys really trust that Donovan's just going to let it go and be very calm? And Mostly? What, what? Why are we letting go? There's nothing to let go. He hasn't insulted anyone. What do you want to talk to him about? I just want to see how he's running things. I'm a bit curious. At night? I mean, he's already awake somewhere. Mm, he may have job for us. Exactly. That too, Gertrude. Good idea. Last I saw, he was going near Adderley Farm. You're, I hate to say it, Addison, you're actually not there. As, as <laughs> when you walked oh. out, um, you're, yeah, you're, you're on the port because they're inside oh, okay. her house. You don't see anything <laughs> and the lights are out. Um, it looks like what you let him in. I mean, yeah, they've got light there, but she's also got like shutters on her windows and stuff to keep the light from coming out. So yeah, like it's, um, you can see, you don't see anything. You have no clue where they're at, but these are just them four in there. We haven't heard anything from Vine in a while. Vine, what are you doing? Like, you're with them, but what are you? What are you thinking? What are you? I kind of want to bring Cartman into this. Where? What are you talking? And what are you thinking? Cartman. Uh oh, how long's Cartman been dead? Cartman. Okay, well, so I guess at this, I guess at the exact moment that. Uh, he saw her and he just swooned because she's so pretty. Yeah, he swooned. He passed out. So I'm he's actually cool back. Again. I mean, he's already he's still in the Discord call. He's just. Yeah, we're gonna retcon it just a little bit, Addison. When you walked in there, Viney was just passed out in a chair. And Jerry's like, "Yeah, he's a." <laughs> a he hasn't <laughs> moved. They they you know, they just kind of left and they just kind of just left. You can see there. the fireball felt um, a really really sharp pain in his, <laughs> in his arm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he's already had four damage, so I would say he's kind of like, he's sleepy, he's at the pain, whatever. Like, a lot's happened, he passed out. So, it's only it's only Furby, Gertrude, and Donovan is in this house. I think but... he's legit asleep, I can't get hold of him. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, we can finish this one. It's, it's yeah, fine. Checking with still Woozy yeah. in the drugs for the arm exchange. It's, it's all good. It's gonna fill his hard drive up with him sleeping. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, you really gotta get a hold of him then. Uh, just get to stop. Um either way, um Furby and Gertrude and Donovan. Um uh, you guys kinda gotta get this and sorry, go back to your, your conversation though. because uh, I kinda interrupted it to see what Cartman was doing. So Um Yeah, let's just go and talk to the Don. See if we can find him. Nothing better to do. Yeah, we're awake now, so... Yeah, you guys were going to try to do that, and I think, because I, I interrupted Josh, because Josh was explaining where he saw the Don, but Don, Josh is not there. Oh, uh, so. we are missing a cat. We're also missing a chicken now, apparently. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well, if you guys leave, I mean, I would assume you guys would see... I mean, once the door opens, Addison is alert. I'm not even going to make you do a perception roll, especially considering you have a 16 and you had a 22... Um, and it's dead of night. It's very calm. It ain't gonna take much when you're on the porch of the inn to just see the door of Sister Grell's open and these three walk out. So. And do you call it them, Madison? Do you not let them know they're there? Uh, Josh is also sleeping. No, no, no. no. I'm, I, was, I was thinking, I'm gonna walk towards the group and let them know pretty much the same thing that they heard was you know the same thing that i heard and i'm not really trusting this guy in my head and something needs to be done about him and quickly so that's when i yell out to the group like hey i don't think untrustworthy is really the way to go i think it's just goblin terms But yes, we should go see what he wants. If we can probably just shout and he'll probably appear somewhere. If that's probably how it works, you can. He's got wings. Well, yeah. Um, someone has I mean, wings. Can... No one we have access to at the moment. Someone is quietly sleeping at Wait, their desk. And hoping actually, he start hang on. Big brain. Was he we like he was wearing a distinctive like silk bathrobe, right? Uh, yes. the bathhouse. Oh, I don't have a detect object, never mind. Oh, sorry. Don was going to walk out into the middle of me like, Don, we are 
interested in your job if you're around? Can you talk to us? Don, are you in the room mm, with us not. tonight? Hold out a Ouija board. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there is no response. Okay, never mind. Let's go tickle the dragon's balls. Fair enough. You just give up that easy. Like, You're we done. don't know where to find them. There's a whole town. And unless we want to go knocking on doors and waking everyone the fuck up. I mean, it's the middle of the night. You guys are pretty much like... I'm just going to say, like, you guys could just go to sleep and wait to the morning. Like, I'm th that's the, literally the option Fair enough. as well. I'm just going to retcon on that one. But it's like, it's like 2, as I said, like 2 a.m. So your choice is, well... But maybe the dragon. Yes, no one's gonna talk to me at two a.m. Fine, let's leave. I mean, we could. Like, the dragon might be asleep to sleep. this night time. It might be better. By the time we get there, it it's might like be a day. three days ride. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get it within like an hour. It's gonna be like three days ride to get to Thunder Tree. That's where it's at, by the way. Well, so yeah, back to bed. Then. I mean, it's up to you. I'm, I'm just saying, you could go ahead and go to Thunder Tree. No, nah, we'll head to fine. bed. Take a little nap. With an okay. hour of us fucking around in town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you guys, you just go to sleep. The Jerry's are working like crazy, and you guys just go up to your rooms. Uh, Vine is still passed out in a chair. They just start sweeping around him. It's kind of it's kind of entertaining. They lift up his wing because his wings just draped off. And they sweep under the wing and they lay the wing back down, and they just keep as if he's not even there. Um, and they just keep going. Um, and you wake up. And Vine is still passed out when you guys wake up. Um, and the Jerry's are kind of wait. I mean, the, the place is spotless. Like, you could rub. And it, it surprisingly is kind of scary. Is It smells fantastic in there. Um, you even look at all the wood. And the wood looks better than it did when you went to sleep. Um, and you kind of can look closely enough. Um, this I'm not gonna make you do it a perception roll for something this mundane, but it looks like they put a fresh polish of like stain on every piece of wood and everything, and it looks like it's been clear. Like it looks like weeks upon weeks of work they've done in like two hours. Hmm. Um, the place looks like a new thing. Um, it looks there's what's even kind of crazier too is there's new decorations. Like it looks like there's it. It has, like, some nice swords and shields on the wall. There's a... We even shocked, too, um, is there's a fire pit in the middle. Very ornate. It's sitting on a bed of gravel and everything. It's very warm and everything. Like, it, it's a good little atmosphere. Um, and they're just sitting behind the counter, uh, wiping the counters down. One's running back and forth with kegs and things. You know, their normal endeavors as if what happened to this place overnight did not happen. Um, but yep, the only thing the same is <laughs> Viney passed out in a chair and a goblin standing on the table that it's at slapping him, trying to wake him up. It is not working. Uh, and he sees you guys come down the stairs. It's AM. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I said, you guys got rooms to yourself, everything. No worries. Um, we're just small goblins. He's not exactly uh, light, and we don't have quite the manpower at the moment for us all to just pick up and leave. We had way too much going on last night. Could one of you guys go take him to his room? Because uh, we, we, you know, we can't just have a passed out bird in the middle of our restaurant. As you can tell, we worked really hard on making this place look nice for the Don. So if you could, you know, bring him up to his room. We'll take care of it from there. Sure. The fur meal can be used again. Help a dozen okay. viney and bring him up. Okay. I'm not even going to make you roll for any of that or just narrate it. Yeah, you just pick him up, walk to his room, set him down, and you guys go back. So it's it's morning now. I would say not early morning. I'd say 7. Enough that you, you can even tell from outside. You hear sounds and ruckus from outside because you had a nice little sleep in, especially because then you woke up in the middle of the night at like 2 a.m. So you slept in real nice. Um, and there's goblins just bustling around the town square. And what's kind of creepy is it's, you guys saw this at night. It was dark. 
It's as if this was a ghost town. This is the exact opposite. The second you walk outside, it is like a bustling metropolis. There is more goblins here than there ever was. Be I mean, like, you've, you've ever seen before. Easily two to three hundred goblins. Just everywhere. More than what you'd think this village could hold. Um, just going back and forth. Some are doing this. Some are carrying lumber. Some are carrying rocks. Looks like there's a lot of construction going on. Um, there's stalls set up on the town green. Um, all kinds of vendors. A female kid. Goblins. Uh, female goblins. Everything you could think of. This is a goblin city. Um, it is very different than what you know. So, um, But all in the middle of it in the town green. Walking around. Um, eye in the stalls, people handing him things and everything is Donnie. Um, and he's he's not wearing the you know the, the silk suit pajamas, the silk bathrobe that you saw him before. Um, he's got a a uh, his pipe before, his, but it looks like he's actually got a few strands of hair. You know, just like a normal guy. goblins don't have full heads of hair, but they've got you know a few strands like what you would think. It, and he's got a nice comb over. It's slicked down. It looks like it's greased up. And he's wearing a very nice black suit. Got a handkerchief, a nice tie. He's got an ascot. He is a man of business, for what you can tell. Um, and when you look around, as he's interacting with these goblin stalls and everything, they jump when the second they notice he's there. Um, but then they start giving him things and smiling and going on. Um, and he calmly takes the things that they're giving him and, and he walks on. Um, you can clearly tell he is the boss hmm. around here. But Okay, well. And what do you do? Don and we'll walk over and be like, ah, oh, Don. <clears throat> Don, you seem to have had a job for us. I, you're, you seem to have got the town working quite nicely, I must admit. What's the what's what's the job you want us to do then? Job, I don't. First things first, I, you guys are my guests. Please don't use my title, Donny. It's Donny. Uh, right. I'll be more than happy to address your titles, but I feel like from way you guys have treated my Jerry's and from what they speak so highly of you, I consider you family. So you can please consider me Donny. Call me Donny. I don't like to be called by my title besides my associates around here. He waves his hands to all the goblins around. But he says, but no, to you guys, it's Donnie. Uh, Fair uh, enough. I, I don't know what you guys mean by, by job. I really have job. I mean, I've, as you can see, I've got plenty of associates to do my jobs for me. Um, they, nah, I, don't, I don't really have anything big. Now, I trust me, I will let y'all know. If a big job that my goblins can't do come up, but at the moment you can see, and he points to a row of goblins. Looks like one's going one way and one's going another, carrying a lot of construction supplies, as you can tell. He's like, we're doing a lot of repairs. You know, clearly this was a human town, um, and we're we're kind of adjusting some aspects of our personal homes and everything to gobl to be more goblified. Now, obviously, as you can tell. The Stone Hill Inn would be great for us to be goblified, but no, we, we, we welcome travelers like you, especially our guests. It is great the way it is for our guests. Not everybody's as small as us, eh? Uh, we got some halflings, maybe, but come on, we don't want to make Ophirbog over there uncomfortable. It's such a tiny but we'll just give a so, happy little wave. But we're adjusting over. everything else. Is there any way I can do a perception to see if this is legit? Uh, the insight. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, I think it'd be insight. Can I insight check to be like, is he's legit or is he just full of shit? I mean, I, you know, I'm not gonna make you roll for it because he's actually being legit. <laughs> like, I don't really know how to tell you. I mean, I could basically say if you want to go ahead and roll whether or not Donovan would know, and like whether or not if he rolls so badly that Donovan would just be completely suspicious of him forever because he has no way of freaking knowing. But if you rolled anything like above a ten, you know what? For role playing, I'd say I'd say, you. yeah, sure. For role play, I'll do it. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 over a ten. Yeah, he knows. Surprisingly, and I would say even as a rogue, 
you've been around, you've dealt with cheats, liars, con, or, con artists, everything like that. Um, he, surprisingly, he, he feels like he fits in that category. But he's not lying. Like, his demeanor and everything about him gives off crime boss. Like, that's kind of, obviously, that's kind of what I'm going for. But he's being honest with you. This is not a lie. This is something that your fellow, like, your friends within this underworld would say to you. Because they wouldn't lie to you. So. Hmm. But he just nods. Mm. Okay. Respect one don to another. Keep doing you. So, yeah. Which I hate to be the bearer of bad news. On one aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you guys were given a a building on the other side of the Sleeping Giant. Alright, by the previous owners. Um, We've... Hold that. (laughs) What? Yeah, the ruin. I forgot about that for a minute. Yeah, so you guys were <laughs> given the ruin. Um, vague, I vaguely remembered it, but I did. And I just, I hate to tell you, um, we're going to leave our stores ungoblified, but we've got a ton of goblins here. I hope you don't mind. We kind of repossessed it. But as accommodations, as I said, just like what the Jerry's told you, You've always got rooms at the Stone Hill Inn. Consider it your home. But we, we've we got, we cannot give up land. It, it didn't go through, they didn't go, I, I hate, it, it really breaks my heart. Donnie, he don't worry about heart. it. it. To be fair, I don't think we ever stepped foot in that building. <laughs> yeah, and as he's apologizing, it doesn't really look like he's groveling, but he bows a little bit as he's patting his heart. And the second he does this, Like, to see him kind of Joe General, like, apology. Everybody stops. Like, it's like, freeze. And everybody is just watching him do this. And, and once you tell him that, he looks around and it was everybody stopping. He's like, what, is is it supposed to be like a circus or something? And the second he says that, everybody goes right back to Clint. Like, again. I guess they were all just a smidge shocked to see him, would say groveling, but begging for forgiveness for the fact that he took your home back. So, but, but yes, as I said, you're, you will always have a home at the Stone Hill and you will always have rooms for you. Um, I hate to say it's very limited on rooms too, so you won't have ones with like your names on it or something, but we will keep it clean. Every time you guys come here, there will be an empty room for you, but if you're gone, we will have to rent that room out to adventurers and stuff, so I would yeah. keep possessions in them. Yeah, uh, so. Froby does have one question. There were... Go ahead. Not so many goblins here a while ago, and now there are very many goblins. Um, where did so many come from that there are so many in this town now? We know the Jerry's came oh. from the Quagmore, but there are more than Jerry's now. Word gets around uh, in our, uh, that's how I say, our own little goblin world. All right. Um, we, the Jerry's, let me know. I've known the Jerry's for a while. Um, they let Barry, Terry, Derry, Gary, Timmy, Jimmy, and, of course, Jim, but we don't talk about Jim. Don't confuse Jimmy with Jim. It's different. We had those two different ones. Uh, but we let them all know we came here. Won our spots in this town with our own means. And word travels fast. All right, indeed. These people heard a goblin, ru- a, a goblin run village of only goblins. And uh, you don't pass that up. Our lives, just like you said, Jerry's were a Kragma tribe. That's that's usually the life of us goblins. Bandits hiding in caves, being stepped on by things bigger than us. This is a new life. 
we offer a new life. Mm. So, we we have shorter lives than all of you. So thus we work faster and do things differently than the rest of you. So it may seem an explosion of population, but this is just normal goblin life to us. Well, not quite as normal. As I said, we usually are in caves, but we are normally work this fast. We spread this fast. We do things this fast. And yes, I will let you do an insight on that. And yes, he is telling the truth. Oh, good thing he is. <laughs> Does 22? Yeah, yeah. Jay got 22. Yeah, he's telling the truth. You're all right, Don. For me, bigger than you, but not gonna step. You're all right. Oh, we ain't gotta worry about that. Trust me, one... <laughs> we're to the point now at this large scale. Uh, one big tough guy isn't exactly gonna be a problem for us, if you uh, get my drift. Good. Good. So. Yeah. So, but now... We don't don't even talk like that. You're never considered a threat here. As I said, you're family. All right. I feel so, like we should invest uh, in this town now, somewhat. Yeah, we do need to head out at some point, though, for the dragon. Yes, with our sleeping Aracocra. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're at an uh, we're at an hour and a half. And we've got a sleeping Aracocra. Yeah, we we're probably gonna get to a point where, where, um, if you go off and do combat. It's going to be a little difficult with Cartman being gone. So, <laughs> do you guys have anything else you want to do in the town? <laughs> or anything at all? Or Fuck it, what does Gertrude want to do? What does all Addison want to do? We know going gone. Oh, actually, yeah, I mean, you... how much gold does the party have, Donovan? In terms of gold pieces, 505, 5 platinum, 63 electrum, 395 silver, and 1,350 copper. Anyone want to upgrade their shit? That's uh, actually also I've got peridots and uh, pearls, peridots, carbon lines, tea ring, and the spike gauntlets to give back to the other people that uh, are now not jobs. here. Yeah. Well, right. fuck it. Let's go sell some shit. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the blacksmiths and get you guys some better stuff. Ruby can't because druid, but everyone else can. Can we sell the peridots and pearls anywhere? Oh, uh, and the silver tea ring. Are, are you asking the DM? Yeah, we're asking you. Matt, are you asking yeah, I'm asking Don? Me. Oh, ask me. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, you know where the stores are. There's the Lion Shield coaster. That is a. Um, that's the weapon shop, kind of what you know is a weapon are they shop. Still and there? then there's the Barthens. Yeah, they're all there. There's Barthens provisions. Well, well, you don't know. I mean, the buildings are still there. I mean, you guys have never. You guys, I mean, for what it sounds like, there is no more humans there. Um, but it did. But he did say we're gonna leave. He, word for word, he said we leave the stores and stuff humified, you know, for visitors. Yeah, fuck it. Um, Lion Shield Custer, it is. Uh, we yeah, did the but Barthens. That's where the weapons are, and there's Barthens provisions where you know that gave you the mission with the ox cart, with the ox cart and everything. That's the general store. Nothing so, we're you know, gonna you the buy should cost more than five hundred. Oh god, no. So. We should probably head to the armory and get. Does anyone want really want a better weapon or better armor? I want better arm. Better you know, armor. Gertrude, she's not interested in weapons unless she sees something very specific. Fair enough. I'm quite happy with my uh, with most of my gear. To be honest, it's pretty okay. Unless there's anything better we can find. Is there a potions place in town or like an apothecary? Yeah, there's the herbalist, which is Harbin. Wester's home. Okay, uh, um, which that been. was the woman that you guys rescued. Yeah, yeah, Donovan gonna... was hoping to get lucky there. Yeah, Furby's going to beg some spending money off of the bunny. Oh, dude, party money. We can all use it. And see about getting some health potions, potentially. I have three. You have three? Yeah, Gertrude's has got a couple in her pocket as well. Okay, Furby's like the only... Okay, never mind then. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good for health potions, Furbog. Maybe we can of... give you some... Leather armor? I uh, already got it, I think. Better leather armor? Um, what armor do I have? Yeah, leather. Studded. There is, there is studded. Studded has leather. metal. What you... That's what the studs uh, are. And I can't wear metal. That's why mine's studded. Uh, 
think we're kind of just stuck waiting on the bird. Yeah, I think Cartman being asleep's kind of fucked us a little bit. <laughs> we can make this just a shorter episode and cut it off where we just I mean, we stop can, talking uh, it on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, also at the same time, as I just said, uh, you haven't met any of these people. Fuck okay, it, let's just go talk to people. Uh, okay, sure. I don't want to go that route without actually, you know, introduce some kin and characters for people. Line Joe Coaster. So, yeah, Line Joe Coaster. All right. You guys walk in. And it doesn't look much different. Now, surprisingly, is I mean, it looks different, but it doesn't look like it's would be any different than where you walk into, like, say, a human village. But when I say it looks different, it looks kind of like a Stone Hill Inn. Like, it is fresh. It looks like this was just built. That's how clean that kind of meant to say with the Stone Hill Inn. It is so clean and, like, new stain and everything. It looks like it was just built, like, a minute ago. Like, let alone overnight, it feels like. And behind the counter, sharpening a po- sharpening and polishing a sword is a goblin. Uh, obviously, surprise, surprise. Um, and he, as you walk in, he stands up uh, from his, looks like he was standing on a very tall stool to be able to look behind the counter, but he, he kind of stands up on it, stands up straight. He goes, hey, hey, welcome in, welcome in. This is the... Well, we used to call it the Lion Shield Coaster. I call it Timmy Stab Stab. What do you think? I'm, I'm brainstorming ideas. What do you sound bad? Excellent name. Uh, if you can't tell, my Much name. Better my than name before. is Timmy. Why not yeah, Stabby Timmy's... Mookstab? Stabby Mookstab. I gotta write that one down. He pulls out a piece of paper and he writes it down. And um, from from what you hear in the back, and he says, "I'm telling you, those names are rubbish." And from out from behind the, like from what looks like an opening into the back room, comes a female goblin that has got an apron on. She's wiping her hands on the apron, um, but it's got soot and looks like grease and everything. She would look like she would fit in very well as Smithy. And she goes, I'm telling you, those names are rubbish. I liked the Lion Shield Coister. And he says, but we can't do the Lion Shield Coister. We cannot. It's... It's officially tied to the guild, the Lion Shield Coister. We can't do that. She goes, I'm telling you then, we should do something like Goblin Name, but gosh, Stabby Stab sounds like something you'd come up in when you were in one of those tribes. I told you not to mention when I was in the tribe. And they start bickering back and forth as this goes on. Do you guys just let it continue? or? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys want to hear me just throw these voices back and forth, you shitheads? We're not intervening in the marital dispute. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But as he starts doing this, and she kind of stops him, she puts her hands up, and she's like, "Well, I'm gonna tell you, we're still brainstorming the ideas. You're no help at all." Looks at Furby. Stabby Stab is a horrible name. Come on, really, Stabby Stab? It's descriptive. A name that tells you what you're gonna get. You I mean, yeah, stabby but do you stab? really want to walk into a place that mentions stabby stab? Like, yeah, you probably get stuff to stab, but you also would have the indication you might get stabbed. How about the stabby shield coaster? Bit of both? No? And you, they freeze in their tracks. Uh-oh. And then they look at each other, they smile and go, stabby shield coaster it is. <laughs> and so she walks back to the back. And he goes, he goes like, well, I got to say, I thank you guys for that. Um, tell you what, I have these really nice daggers here. Uh, I just polished. Uh, I can't really give away too much, uh, but I'll let you pick one, bunny man. Oh, okay. Um, what am I choosing from then? Uh, you see three daggers in front of you. Mm-hmm. They are shit. <laughs> like that's the that's the fun like you've you've seen daggers before uh and he goes look i'm not these were ones that we i i okay you want me to spit it out we were gonna throw them away all right uh, but um you know what i feel bad making you choose for them how about you just take them they'll work good as like picking your teeth out uh you know or just pieces of metal can i tape one to you know, each uh, I mean, they're not real sharp. That's why we're going to throw them away. We can't do anything to them. 
I feel like a rabid weasel with a knife tape to it. It would be kind of amusing. You could always do it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean, as I said, it's just kind of like a hunk of metal, and he, like, slides one across his hand and it does nothing. He's you like, see, it's literally, it. like, just... Yeah. Ah, can you sharpen that? And it's, like, a half-inch thick. It's, like, it's literally as if someone took a piece of metal and put a handle on it. Oh. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's as close to dull as you could possibly get. Well, how much for these spiked gauntlets that our friend no longer seems to want to use? And I plan on buying something very nice for Gertrude with it. Hmm. If there is anything that Gertrude would want. More gauntlets. Ooh. Uh, tell you what. Yeah. Can Gertrude learn I'm, I'm Mage going... Hand so she can get a third gauntlet on the Mage Hand? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask a favor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you could do two things you could come back later you see we we're just now getting we didn't even have a name for the place we're just now getting our bearings and it's not like the previous owners were just gonna leave us their gold that they had to use to buy stuff so we don't exactly have a lot of cash luckily we have the amazing don he's you know kind of helping us do remodeling and stuff like that um and, and everything, but when it comes to like disposable money to work with, um, we don't have a lot. So when I say two options, you could come back later and keep your gauntlets for then, or you could leave the gauntlets with us. We will assess them, and I can promise you, we will give you a better deal if you do that when you come back if you leave them with us than if you guys leave and we have to do a quick assessment with when we actually have disposable income what about a third option can we take the spikes off and put them onto our friends gauntlets already and make them better quick yeah, check what not, are i mean gertrude's gauntlets that's not Plus one or yeah gertrude's Gert Gert currently um Got the tarnished gauntlets equipped, which is just like solid steel fists. Yeah, on your head. Or some sort of solid there. metal. We don't know if it's steel or not. It's just solid metal fists. Are they what plus one to hit or something though? Look, it'll be under ATC. It'll say like something for most things, and then it'll have a bigger number if it's plus one. So, I mean, uh, no, it's just my strength proficiency. Hmm. But it was like a plus. We added a plus to yeah. it, didn't we? That's weird. Because th that was the original plan, though. What it, Gertrude, is that it was, um, we gave you. What did I use on yours? Did I use? They're plus it's five. Like plus eight. Plus one. Plus five. Yeah. Tarnished gauntlets. Yeah. The, the tarnished gauntlets. Okay. Um. Go back. All right, because the plus character. five is just the strength. <clears throat> so should that yeah. had a plus one to that that whole time? Well, yeah, you got a plus one there already. Um, well, here's the thing, is I kind of fit it, like, it fits better that you just have your strength modifier. Well, do a plus one, do a plus one, you're right, because it's, it's unarmed strike. Um, no, like... Easier to hit. It's so, already there. If you look, it's 1d8 plus one plus strength. Oh, that's, that's for the modifier. damage, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, so the plus one's on I mean, the damage. I mean, to hit, though, you're just swinging, you're just swinging fists, though. So, you know, and, like, when you change your weapons, you're not going to be more proficient at swinging your fists. Yeah. Fair enough. Does that make sense? Like, you'll be doing more damage, but you won't be more proficient at hitting with your fists. Yep. Okay, never mind. So, um, but come back to the character. So, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, I, I don't know that. I don't know if you can put your spikes in uh, to the other gauntlet. Um, you need to talk to Barry the Smithy, you know, down the road. Uh, all we do is sell the weapons. He fixes them up and everything. Gertrude, you're cool. Spiky metal gauntlet. Ah. Gertrude could talk to Smith. Right. For now, should we give these goblins some gold to help them set up? Could be good investment. How about a platinum? Uh, I... I'm shocked. Are you... You would do that? 
if everyone else is in agreement. Gertrude shrugs. Addison? What's the, um... So... I... Uh, look, I, I feel uncomfortable. Doing the, and I, I, we, goblin behavior, we kind of feel like... If you want to invest, um, go give that money to the Don. You know, I, I love the appreciation, but I feel like I might get in trouble having that kind of cash just on me without notifying the Don. So, Fair enough. Go, go, go give it to the Don. And, and I, I, again, I'm just very kind of shocked you guys would do that for us. So... Uh, you know what? He takes the knives, those cheap knives, and he kind of just throws them on the ground and throws them into like his little bin. And he's like, "That is, I kind of feel insulted even offering those things now. You, if you give the money to the Don, I'll have a nice, beautiful knife here for you when you get when you guys get back." I said, "We're just setting up. I don't have anything now. We're just trying." You see my my wife back there. Uh, She's trying to get everything kind of good up, oiled up, looking nice. Um, cause they obviously took a lot of their merchandise too. Kind of like what I said, they didn't leave gold for us. They didn't exactly leave their weapons either. Um, we bought the building. Basically, we won the building over. We didn't win the merchandise. So, um, we're kind of trying to spiff up what they did leave behind. We're kind of finding out it was all garbage. Like obviously, but you know, we gotta work what you got. It's goblin nature. Um, but Barry over at the Smithies is cracking up some stuff. He's always been a good Smith. He, uh, it's so nice to see him actually be happy and giddy to have all the equipment that he can to do whatever he wants now. Um, but he's getting some stuff for us. I will ask him to especially commission a knife for you. And from when everybody around here speaks so highly of you, I don't think he's going to have a problem with it. So if you guys are going to the Smithy, you might even go ahead and tell him what specifications for that knife you want. Because it's on us. Oh, we've been to the smithy. And I show him the golden thumb finger. <laughs> ah. Yeah. And then, well, do you mention the giant lightning bolt penis that furbog has <laughs> got? I mean, I'll look at Furbog and be like, it's up to you. Herbie would prefer to keep certain personal artifacts his own. Yes. Fair enough. I mean, if you keep that a secret, do you just, like, only put it on at certain points? Because it's two foot long. I think what Furby's resorted to is wearing, like, sort of a long kilt that covers it. And it looks like you have a massive erection. No, it's not sticking. Of the time. He doesn't put it on so it's sticking straight out into the street. It's two foot long. It can be pointing do it? down, so you have it's a It's solid you metal know this. on a chastity belt. So the way I'd be okay, picturing no, this, first, right, is I, essentially I'm a strap this to on. A woman. I Hold feel on, not really, stop. I feel really bad. Stop. <laughs> the way I'm picturing this, right, is a strap on, right, With, like leather straps and metal dick. So my assumption would be that it would be pointing downwards because it's not a flesh dick. It's not actually like physically molded to him or attached to him in any way other than with the straps. So it's not like he's gonna hurt it. So just like kinda dangling down. The straps around his hips Dragging sleeping like on, on him. It, he's more than he's, per- he's eight foot, he's like seven so he's foot not tall. wearing any So he's not wearing any clothes either though, clearly. He is. He, Correct. He's wearing a kilt. He's not, picture. He's There's not wearing clothes. underpants. Yeah, but that was before he got the is metal this kilt slung. two foot long? How tall is he? He's like seven foot tall, maybe eight. So, I mean, his legs... I mean, I'm going to say even then, there's a piece of this sticking out the bottom. No, of he would have made it long enough. He can see his own dick. He knows how long it is. <laughs> it was a long kilt, so he's wearing a dress. Got, he's wearing his giant skirt. It's more a skirt, to be honest, with like a bit of fabric over the shoulder. <sighs> okay. Okay. This conspic- walking you, kind of like... I'll let you... I'll let you have a hidden penis that sometimes a gust of wind comes in and everyone can see. Marilyn Monroe's so, it. Consider it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Um, I don't think they have the air vents on the street here. Thankfully. Yeah. But think yeah. of the amusement every time he fast Thunderbolt, he's just yanking it up for a bit. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. So, yeah. Well, if you guys already went to the Smitty, then you already know Barry. Uh, yeah, so go and... Uh, Go and deal with that. I'll, you know, 
Thank you again. Thank you again for the, the name. Stabby Shield Coyster sounds great. We'll get working on the, the sign from the woodworker. Does anyone else have anything they want to do? I've got some shit to sell other than that. We're on an hour and 42, 42 minutes, right? Can yeah. I just sell this shit, please? I've had it in my inventory since the beginning and I want to get rid of it. Okay, well, Barthens Revisions. Silver tea ring, carn carnelian peridot, and pearls. So a bunch of gemstones well, and a ring. I'm going to say this, if you for just the sake of time. Uh, it sounds like the person that has all the money is the Don. So, uh, it sounds like if you want to sell, you'll have to go to the Don. Okay. Does anyone else want to do anything else? I'm good. <clears throat> Carmen, do you want to do anything? Oh, yeah. My bad. I disconnected him. Yeah. Dude was probably going to start snoring soon. <laughs> Cap? Oh, my God. Gertrude's all right. Gertrude's just following uh, Donovan around like his bodyguard, as usual. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, quick trip to the Don, then. Let's sell this shit and be done with it. Okay, well, you guys go, and I'm going to say the Don is also walking around uh, just like he was before. Um, he's got his hands behind his back. He's got the pipe in his mouth. He's observing everything, you know, watching the goings and ons, and he sees you guys. I would assume you would wave him over, you know, you get his attention. And he kind of just, he doesn't trot over, he doesn't jog or anything. He just, like, quickens his pace just a smidge from his light inspecting walk. And he just kind of quickens up to you guys and he's like, yeah, did you, uh, did you guys need something? Um, apparently no one else has money yet. Uh, you apparently are the treasurer. We have some bits to sell and because no one else has any money, we were suggested your way again. Ah! Yeah, follow me to the town master's hall. Okay. And he like follows you that way. He's like, that's where we keep all the money. Well, not all the money. And he turns to you and he gives you a wink. Mm -hmm. uh, and he keeps going. Uh, and in there, it is... Now, this is where it's a little bit different. About that, th this kind of makes sense from what he was saying. This is a, a treasury of some sorts, it feels like. Because you walk in and it looks like it was before. And it looks like everything else, kind of, where it's got the same setup as the old way the Townsmaster Hall was. Um, but just like the Lion Shield Coyster, now Stabby Shield Coyster, and Stonehill Inn, um, it is looks brand new, as if it was just built. But in the back, where it used to be a jail, um, and there used to be iron bars, is now solid stone. Ooh. walls and a metal door and on either side of the door it looks like a vault door in a side this clearly looks like a bank like this looks like it came straight out of a bank and on either side of the door is goblins big goblins not near as big as donnie probably still six inches shorter than donnie but they're still bigger than every other goblin there donnie i'm gonna just go ahead and give you guys size perspective he's about the size of a hobgoblin but hobgoblins look different um, you can clearly tell he's a goblin, but he's tall. Like, he he's actually taller than Gertrude. Hobgoblins are taller than Gertrude. So, he's he's a little bit shorter than Don than Donovan, but he's almost eye level with Donovan. Mm -hmm. um, and these guys, these are tall goblins, but they're nowhere near the size of him. But he, they are armed. They're wearing nice studded leather armor carrying uh shields and spikes and they're wearing nice helmets they're clearly guards um and they're standing on our side and as you guys walk in he uh he pulls his hand from he pulls the pipe out of his uh his mouth and with the same hand that's got the pipe in it he motions them to move out of the way with two fingers and he uh as he walks towards the door they open the door and step back and inside that room is it's pretty funny with the size of the door that you <laughs> that you that opened you expected to see like mountains of gold like this will be the heist um of the century it's just empty <laughs> there's like one uh one or two chests st along the wall that are open and empty um and one or two on the other side of the wall that are open and empty, empty shelves everywhere. Um, it's as if it was a very 
wealthy location, but it has been robbed already. Um, but he shows no notice as if like, oh, we've been robbed. He just walks right in and walks to the back. And in the back is a probably the only chest that's closed. And he pulls a key from inside his, his blazer of his suit. He kneels down. He opens the chest, and inside the chest, as you see, probably, I mean, if you were to guesstimate, about six, seven hundred gold pieces Eesh. in there. Um, Not a whole lot. And he says, I'm going to tell you guys this. And and as soon as he says that, like, he m- looks behind you, because I, I assume you all walk in behind him, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you all walk in, Um, and as soon as you walk in, the vault door behind him closes. Uh, and you hear it lock. And he says, we're in a... We're in a soundproof room now. Alright. I don't mean to frighten. Uh, I do this as a precaution, obviously. Um, you guys can tell. And obviously you've been told by the stabby shield coister, it seems. Uh, we don't have a lot of money. All right. Now, to not have a lot of money, you're not very respected as a town. You know, they will just stand all over you. They'll act like, well, obviously they have no money. They can't defend themselves stuff. So, the fact that I'm letting y'all in here to see how much money we've got is a big Shine of faith on my part. Get my drift. How are you guys not so. hitting famine yet? Huh? Oh, this is what we have left over. We just paid our bills. Don't, don't, yeah, don't worry about that. We also have the farms, you know, it, the old Adamath Orchard, the Adderley Farm. They had plenty of crops. I mean, obviously, they couldn't just uproot those and take them with them. Especially considering, from what I hear, you ripped the leg off old Adamath, <laughs> which I gotta. You know, I don't, as a soundproof room, I kind of want to be a little off cooth here. Pretty neat. That's pretty cool. What you guys did? <laughs> I wish I'd seen it. Uh, that's pretty funny when I heard the story, especially considering he was still bitching about it when when uh, he got his, as he was leaving. So that's pretty funny. I wish I'd seen. But no, we got plenty of food. We just, a lot of what you see, uh, everything looks nice. That's manpower. All right. This is for commodities things like that you know provisioning luckily like we have a lot we can already rely on barry over at the smithy oh he's a master with the smith he can turn nothing into something it seems you know you take old scrap piece of metal around here he can make a beautiful sword with it um so we're relying on that um but we are just starting out i mean you guys even noticed that we just came kind of came from nothing so we don't have a lot but we, if you guys can't tell, I mean, what do you guys think that we're in a soundproof room? Do you think we're kind of giving off the vibe of not to be trifled with, or just one second? Think? Honest opinions only. Hi. Did you just wake back up again? Did I pass out? <laughs> yeah. 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 No. I'll, yeah. You've no. been gone for like an hour. No, okay. Yeah. No. I have no idea. You pass out. I literally just woke up. So that's why we disconnected you. Yeah. No. That's all we'll figure out. Yep. No shit. Oh, fuck. Are you okay, buddy? No, but I'm very, very tired. That's why I'm definitely not myself tonight. Do you want to? Just... We've only got ten minutes left. You're, you're good. You're good. If you want, just end your recording, buddy, and you get a bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to think of my shit up. All right, bye, bye. Okay. See you, Cartman. Bye, Cartman. <laughs> bye, Cartman. <laughs> oh my god, that was <laughs> funny. I'm so uh, keeping that in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so. Goes back to the the story. Yeah, so, so yeah, what do you guys think? Do we give off the vibe of uh, you know, not being trifled with, or what do you what do you think? You have numbers. You have aesthetics. Are you sure you're not just going to die of starvation or lack of provisions or lack of funding in general? I know you see all the farms, but you need resources, and you don't get resources for nothing. Probably. Trust me. We we goblins are resourceful. Yeah, and I mean, most... look around you. So, like, look at the building. Look what we've done so far in such a small amount of time. We've got this, all right. 
Don't worry. I'm as I said, you guys are the only ones that are allowed in here. Besides, um, you know, um, I I do allow our our business owners in here. Um, it's a soundproof room. It's a great place to talk business um, from time to time without hearing. And right now, obviously, we got a lot of children out there. We don't want them to hear. Well, you know how little money we've got at the moment. Most but start about. Most costs probably go. just in beginning. Might even out once you have stuff started up. Yes, we will make more money. We're just starting out. Don't worry about us, okay? Would us adding some funds help? We rely on this town anyway. Pretty much this is our home. So I'll I'll do you I'll do you one better. I, I I'm kind of honored that you would invest in us. You guys are wanting to get rid of these items. Yes. Would you be inclined to have those be your investment? That was literally what I was about to say before Purbot said it for me. If you guys give those to us, we'll use it as investments. Does anyone else have any um, other goodies? Um. Should we go and rifle through the chicken's pockets quickly and see what he has in him? You just leave him bare naked. Like there's nothing left. <laughs> like, kind of tempted. He, he, as if, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so far he's got AIDS, syphilis, tits, a tiny cock, uh, a 12 inch horse cock, and apparently has a gay badge. Well, he doesn't have the second to last one anymore. I'm reading his uh, his literal item weight sheet. I know. <laughs> he hasn't... Well, yeah, the, uh, the horse cock became his arm. Yeah, that was uh, a low one. That's kind Frabby. of a thing. Yeah. But no, I don't have that anymore. So we're giving yeah. Don all the trinkets to help Pretty start much. the thing. Yeah, all you have is your gold now at that point. Yeah. Well, I, I really do appreciate it. That's a soundproof room. You see him, and I want to say soundproof room, he keeps saying all this, but it's you do have a notice before out there it's all business. This is the first time probably from when you've met him that he seems to relax. Like he looks like he's about to like pull out his, like, you know, un loosen his tie a little bit but he doesn't but he's a little relaxed in here he's like yeah you, you got gotta keep a persona out there obviously you know you're the boss you gotta act like the boss so uh but I, i'm actually genuinely touched and gracious for your investments it won't be for naught i promise that um even if you didn't give us this stuff as i said before you don't feel don't feel like, you know, if you didn't give this to us, we would die. I said we could, we could definitely make it, but we will make great use of this money. It's same I as it. the uh, business in town. Pay back. We do the same. We live off tavern. We come back, so we help town. Yeah, and I, I, get, I will iterate it again. You've always got a home here. All right. Your family, don't worry about it. Yeah, you need anything? You need any of my boys? You let me know. Well, fair play. All right, and and from what you hear, you he from behind the chest, he pulls back, and you can see a hole in the wall. It's not real deep, but it's enough that sticking out looks like from from inside the wall is a string, and he pulls the string. He pulls it several times. It dings. Uh, he pulls it about three or four times. And then after that, a minute later, the door, the, the vault door opens. Um, and you can still hear a slight ring. It looks like that string was tied to a bell outside of the door. Kind of let them know that, hey, you can go ahead and let us out now. Um, and the door opens and he, you know, pulls his hand out and goes, hey, yeah, I assume our business is concluded. Business concluded. I appreciate, I, I appreciate your your patronage and I'm gonna go ahead and have that be where we end it so everybody press stop on your recordings hello I am Matt the editor of A Pint of Cthulhu if you enjoy these episodes and wish to hear more why not support us over on Ko-fi at A Pint of Cthulhu thank you very much and enjoy the pint Hey there, my name is Soren. You can also find me at Soren G on Twitch.
and at Daily Dingus and Pick of Cthulhu on Tumblr, where we'll occasionally post art about the campaign. Hello, I am Ethan. Um, if you guys want to find me outside of the podcast, I am actually a Twitch streamer by trade. I play I play a variety of games on Twitch. I'm the Red Toucan. But I also upload all of those to YouTube as well, Red Toucan there, and to TikTok, Red Toucan as well. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I go by Captain Hero Man and you can find me playing video games on Twitch. Hi, my name's Josh. You can find all of my links at linktree backslash joshb66. That's l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e backslash joshb66. Thank you. Thank you very much to Sirenscape for providing most of the sounds you hear in this episode. You can also find us on Twitter at A Pint of Cthulhu. That's at A Pint of Cthulhu. You can also give us a review on your podcast app of choice. Thank you very much and goodbye.